Okay, good morning everybody. Daf Ayin Aleph Amud Bet 71b at the two dots, five lines from the top. That was on already? Yeah. Okay. We all know that if one does two, eats, let's say, two kizaytim of chelev, forbidden fats, and there is a yidiyah in between. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, there's a idea in between, knowledge in between the two eatings that divides the two eatings into two separate acts and they cannot combine into one carbon. If you need two separate carbonot, that we know. So, there's a machloka today. Okay, that's if you have knowledge in between the two acts. What about if your knowledge only came after doing both things? But you didn't find that about both of them together. It's not like someone came into you and said, you know those two pieces that you ate today for breakfast, lunch? Yeah. What about them? They were for Caleb. No, that's not the case that we're talking about. We're talking about a case where he found out about number one at one point. After he's doing both acts, he found out about the morning one first and then about the next one. So, there's a machlokat here between Rabbi Yechelon and Rabbi Let's see. Rabbi Yochanan says you have to bring two chataot. Why? We'll see where the psukim are from. And Rabbi Shlokish says one chatat. Because even though my yidiot were separate, but the idiot came. The eating was done by Helen Mechad, and there's nothing to divide the eatings. So I bring one chatat. For some reason, Rabbi Yochanan says no. The idiot afterwards are also Michal Kot. Since the idiot were separate, so the chataot are separate as well. Now Rabbi Yochanan brings a pasuk. Rabbi Yochanan Amar Chayav Achatato Vehevi. The Pasuk says, Al Chatato. On, on his Chatat, which sounds like what? It says, Oh, he died, love Chatato. Chatato. Asher Chata. When he's notified about the Chatat that he sinned, Vehevi. Kabano, Sidat, Tizim, Timimana Keva. He brings a female, Timimana Keva, and then the Pasuk repeats, Al Chatato, Asher Chata. On the chatat. Okay? So which, which insinuates, says Rabbi Yochan, that on every single chet he has to bring a carbon by itself. So if you found out about the morning one now, and then you found out about the afternoon one later, you bring on each one. He says patur because there's another pasuk, two pasukim before that, that, say, that says, Mechatato means from, from his chata, which means even if he got a, a, a little bit of a kapara, he'll get a sticha for everything. So that comes to teach you that even bringing one chatat, okay, that he was told about one. Okay. He was talking about one chatat afterwards. So, yeah. Sorry, I don't see you. Oh, you don't see me? No. I don't see you either. Okay, one second, we're working on it.
We're not sure. Amnon says, we don't know. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it might have to be something on your yeah, side. Yeah, maybe it's your side. Mm-hmm. You like, she says Lighthouse Project. Is there something to press there about like a video, this and that? No. Oh, is that you? No. I hear the video is showing. It's not showing that like something is wrong. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, okay. So the Gemara is like this. So we have a machlokat here. If you find out um, about the the two actions that you did, you find out after you did both of them. They were both done by Hela Mechad, and now you found out about both of them later in a separate time. Um, how many chata'ot do you bring? So Rabbi Yochanan says two, he brings a pasuk, and Rabbi Shlokish brought a pasuk, which sounds like one. So now the Gemara wants to know each man the does with the other pasuk. Ule Rabbi Yochanan, nami yaktiv me chata'tov in islachlo. Sorry. Rabbi Shlokish yaktiv al chata'tov hevi. Ay, Rabbi Shlokish, you see what line we're on? We're on. You see the last, the first word on the line is haktiv. That's where it's about ten lines down. Eleven lines down. What does he do with that pasuk? So he says, Even though it says to bring each one, that's talking about you already brought. Meaning you brought for the morning. One you found out and you brought one. So now that one can't cover because that one came before you even had a notification, a knowledge about the second one. And after you went to the Beit HaMikdash and you brought the first carbon, then they tell you, by the way, you know in the afternoon what you ate then that day? It was also Chedav. You say, really? So now you can't use the first carbon because you didn't even have a Yediyah which obligated you to bring a carbon. So that's what the Pasuk is talking about. The Pasuk is telling you you have to bring a new one after the Kapara. Okay. So that's easy way out of that Pasuk. What does Rabbi Yochanan do with the pasuk of mechat atov and islachlo? So the Gemara says, which sounds like what? That as long as you have a little bit of a kapara from one, um, it can help for the other one. And Rabbi and Shlokesh learned from there that even though my yidiot were separate, Okay? Uh, I ate two pieces of chedav, behelam echa, and then I find out after doing both about the morning one, and then I find out about the second one in two separate um, yidiot, two separate notifications. Still, once I get a kapara for one of them, and now I know about both of them, and they were done behelam echa, it covers to the second one. That's what I got from Mechat HaTov So the Gemara answers, no, you know what Rosh Yochanan does with that? This pasuk is telling you that if you take get, get a um, if you bring a carbon f- for a little mechatat for somewhat of a chatat, it will 
it will be a slicha, an atonement for the other, he's talking about a case like this. Shachal kezayit u mechza v'nodola v'nodalo al kezayit. Very interesting case. You ate one and a half kezayin. Okay, one kezayit and a half. Then, you were told about the first kezayit that you ate, that was chaylev. Remember that big piece you had, that that was chaylev. Oi, now I have to bring karm chatat. Then, but I don't know anything about my second half. My second half, I'm totally not in the know. I think that it's perfect. It was a great piece of meat, the second half. The 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 the, the Okay. The chazav ve'achal kechatzi zayit acher behelom shosheni, and then I went ahead and I ate another half a zayit. After, in the same helam, the same concealment, as the second one. Now it can't be as the same concealment as the first because the first one's concealment is not concealed anymore. I was told I have knowledge. So what don't I have knowledge about? The 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 first chatzi zayit, the first. Half a zayit, and now in that concealment, I eat another half a zayit. So now the tema let's tarfu. So I would think that now, why not let them come together and let them be one? We don't have to cook the same way. Let's do it, Rabbi Shua. Why not? So kamash v'lon. So this pasuk tells you you can't. They don't come together, and you're going to be you're going to be taken care of with. One chatat that you had to bring for the first one. And why? Because he says like this. Uh, the reason is because Because Allah is like this. What happens if I would bring my carbon for the first kezayit that I ate? You know what it would cover? It would cover... <coughs> it would cover the, the, the... It would cover not only the kezayit that I ate, but it would cover the half a kezayit as well. Okay? Why would it cover the half of Kazayit as well? I don't even have a Yidiyah on it. Don't I need a Yidiyah to be able to be Chayab on it? The answer is I only need a Yidiyah if something is Chashuv, if it could actually bring me to a carbon. But if something is so insignificant because it's not even the right measurement for a carbon, it's only half a Kazayit, so then it can already be atoned for with the, with the carbon that I'm bringing for what I do know about, for the, for the Kazayit. Therefore, Therefore, now, you, now that I ate another half kezayit afterwards, um, so what happens is like this: that you can't really put it together with the first kezayit, half a kezayit, because the first half a kezayit is like part and parcel of the of the of the whole kezayit. So, because. Let's say that story would have ended there, and I would have brought my carbon. It would have it would have swallowed. It would have been mit kaper. So therefore, what happens like this? The listen to this. The idea, the knowledge, which usually we know, idea is always mechalik. It's always differentious between two acts. You can't be considered you're in this same concealment. The idea that was a idea for the first kezayit was also a idea, which. I, which, which obligated you to bring for the half exite. Now, you don't really have to bring for the half exite, but it's considered like you had one for the half exite since it gets swallowed and atoned for in the carbon for the whole exite. And therefore, it's as if you already had a idea on that first half exite. So now, once you had a idea on the first half exite, that's a barrier in between the activating the first half exite. And the one that you did later, the second half of Gazite. So you cannot be mitzvah of them. Mm-hmm. Understand what I just said? Um, 
So therefore the Pasuk says, um, the Pasuk says, He'll bring a carbon for part of his sin. Which means, this guy ate two kizaitim altogether. He's only going to bring for one, for one, for one and a half. Because the second half can't latch on to the first half because the first half is already taken care of and therefore the idea that was there for the first one is as if it was a idea for the half, first half of the French is. That is Yerichanon's answer to this pasuk. Omar Leir, Avinu Ravashi. Avinu said to Ravashi, What exactly is the machloket between Rabbi Yochanan and Shlokesh? Let me just say the machloket simply again, and then the Gemara is going to get more detailed, fine-tuned the machloket. Machloket is that we know that if you have knowledge about an act that you did, once you have the knowledge about that act, any subsequent action that happens is not attached to the first act and needs its own carbon. So if you ate two kizete, of Kezetim of Chelev, and between them there was a knowledge about the first one. The second one needs its own carbon. The Machloket is if you only found out after doing both, but you found out about each one the separate Yidiyah. So, do, does the Yidiyah even after doing both actions also divide the actions into two separate things? So the Gemara wants to know exactly what, what you're talking about. There are two different tracks that you can go. Is it that they're arguing before he was mafresh a carbon? Okay. Which means, he wasn't mafresh a carbon for the first one. He didn't separate an animal and say, this is for my first sin. Okay? So all that happened was he didn't, he didn't go to the corral, the pen, and take anything out and say, this is for my first sin. But all that happened was is he ate two kezete chelev an hour apart, behel mechad with one concealment. He didn't know that, that that part of the animal was the chelev. It was in a bag over there. He didn't know. And that whole bag was chelev. Yeah, one piece now, one piece an hour later. Then he found out that the first piece was chelev. And then he found out that the second piece was also chelev. So, but he never was mafresh anything for the first one. So, the mars of our yidiot mechalkot. Rabbi Yochanan holds, okay, Rabbi Yochanan holds, that the idea, since the idea was separate, the idea can be mechalik for the chataot as well. Okay? And the reason for that is, is because once a person finds out about a sin, he's, he has tremendous regret and pain for sinning. He says, I, can't, I can't believe it. So therefore, it's as if he already brought the carbon. Not that he can't, doesn't have to bring the carbon anymore. But the idea now is already like as if the carbon happened somewhat. Okay? It's like the beginning of the bringing of the carbon. So now that I find out that 9 o'clock in the morning, that first piece I had was chelev, I say, oh, I can't believe it. He's crying. I have to bring a chatat. That's already like bringing the chatat already. So now that chatat is brought, now what? Now, now you find out about the one of the, in the afternoon, the chelev. You can't, you can't now use that chatat for the afternoon one. It's already brought. So therefore now you have to bring a second one. That's what B'yechon holds. The idea itself is like bringing the carbon, and that's, that's enough. And this is the way we learned it at first. Umar Saber of Shlokesh holds, hafrashot mechakot. The only thing that would be able to differentiate and make you bring another carbon 
would be a hafrasha. Okay? If I actually separated a carbon, Rosh Lakish would admit. I took a carbon out. I said, this will be for my first sin that I just found out about. Then, since I didn't, I already was mafresh a carbon, um, you can't use that carbon anymore for the second one. But if, but if, Aval, and that will be Mechalek, Aval, Le'achar hafrosho. But let's say it would be after hafrosho. Okay? So meaning to say, in, according to this tzad, everyone would be moide. Then moide le rosh lakash le rabbi yochim de chayef shtayim. Because rabbi shlokash would say, after hafrosho, I admit to you that you can't now, you don't even know about the second story. You're already mafresh before you find out about the second story. You can't use this carbon anymore for the second story. And therefore, everybody agrees you have to bring Shtayim. That's one way of understanding the Machlokat. And that, let me just repeat that, that nobody argues when you were mafresh for the first one. The whole Machlokat is when you weren't mafresh anything, but you had two Yediot, after doing both actions, okay? Or Dilma, or maybe the Itidali Lachala for Shapli. No. Just the opposite. The whole Machlok is about the Hafrasha. Well, the whole Machlok is like this. The Marsaver Hafrashot Mechalkot. Rabbi Yechelen says the Hafrasha is Mechalik. Or Marsaver Kaparot Mechalkot. And Rabbi Shoker says it doesn't matter that you're Mafrish. The only thing that can differentiate and make me bring a second one is if I already got the kapara, which means I bought it on the mizbech. But if I would just mafresh it, so what? No problem. I could still use it for the second one. And it won't be mechalik the two chataot. Avokol mafresha, but let's say you weren't mafresh any carbon. Then Rabbi Yechonon is moda to Rishlokish that all you have to do is bring one. Okay? Got that? Meaning that the Machloket is only not just about the Yediot. Yediot are not strong enough to Mechalik. If you just have two Yediot that come afterwards and they're separate Yediot, even Rabbi Yechonon is moda that a Yedi is not going to be Mechalik because there's no carbon here. You have to be mafrish. The machlok is when you're mafrish, you have this animal already that I already set aside. So there, there's a machloket that Rabbi Yechelen says that then you can't put the second one on because you don't even know about it. You already mafrish this for one. And the shloket says, I wasn't, I didn't have a kapara yet. So I could. And it's only if I get a kapara. But before I was mafrish anything, there, Rabbi Yechelen would be made to a shlokish. That you could use one carbon for both, even though the yediot were separate. Or dilma beimizu beimizu mechloket. Or maybe extra, or maybe an extreme mechloket. The extreme mechloket is that both both Rabbi Yochanan holds that you always bring two. Even if you weren't mafresh, just the idea alone can make you already be mechalik the two actions, and you have to bring two karbanot. And as Shlokish says, not only do I say that you're wrong, that the yidiot are not mechalik, because he ate it behel mechod. Who could have had two yidiot? He didn't bring the carbon. Even if he was mafresh the carbon, I, I don't have a problem as long as there was no kapara. You could still put the second one on. Once I find out about it. So that would be like, the, the thir- so there's three ways of understanding the Machloket. Either everybody agrees that Afrasha is already going to separate them. Or that's where the Machloket is, but everyone agrees that Yedi is not going to separate them. Or, Rabbi Yechon holds Yediot, even Yediot are Machalkot, and Ashlokot holds even Afrashot are not Machalkot. Means Rabbi Yechon always holds, as long as it's even a Yediyah, you bring two. 
And a shlokah shows, even if there's half Russia, you still bring one. So there's three different pa- tracks we can understand the machloket. Okay? Omar Lay, so Rav Ashi told Ravino, Mistav Rabbein Bezubein Bezubein Machloket. Probably it's an extreme machloket. Whether these idiot or frashot. These are the idiot of Kodim Afrashot Pligi. Aval Acha Afrashot Moyele Rashlokot Shlabi Yechrin Dechayef Shtayim. Ademukim Lekro Leacha Kaporom. Loikmei Leacha Afrashom. If after Afrasha, the Shlokish is Moda, that, oh, you're already mafresh for the first car, but before you had knowledge about the second uh, action, then it's already, it's too late. Now the second one needs its own carbon. So why before we ask the Shlokish, what are you going to do with Rabbi Yochanan's Pasuk? The Shlokish answered, remember the words? He said, what am I going to do? He said, the Gemara said, after kapara, why don't you say after kapara? Why don't you say why don't you say after? Why don't you say after? Hafrasha. Why do you have to go after kapara? Understand, understand what you just said? So you could just say after hafrasha. So the Gemara says, "V'im achar hafrasha pligi, avol koydim hafrasha mo'yu le'ir Rabbi Yechon Rabbi Shlok Shtein Chayav lo achas." Ademuki le'ikro because I used to mech to loik me koydim hafrasha. And I have another point. If you tell me the other track, the opposite one, that they're only arguing what after hafrasha. But the idiot itself are not going to make the cut to separate them for Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan will be made So why Rabbi Yochanan have to find this fancy case of this sh- one and a half kizes and then the second half and the whole fancy terrets for the Pasuk of Rabbi Shlokish? He could have just said very simply, like me kaidim af Russia. He could have just said, that Pasuk of Mechat Asu that says that if you bring for one a little bit, it helps for the other. Is talking is telling you Chiddush that after the idea of the first one, that's not enough to be mechalik. And once I bring for the first one, it will help for the second one. Once I find out about it, obviously, but because I'm only arguing with Shlokish, Rabbi Yechon is only arguing according to this tzad after your mafrish. But if you weren't mafrish, maybe the pasuk told about when you weren't mafrish and telling you that you bring one. So. So, so the Gemara says that the fact that he had to come so far and explain this way must be that um, that they couldn't have said that because he, Rabbi Yechelon argues in that case too. And Rosh Lokesh couldn't have explained the Pasuk, his Pasuk, after Afrasha, because he argues in, in after Afrasha too. So you see that they're both very extreme shitot, and therefore each one had to say, Rosh Lokesh had to say, your Pasuk is after Kapara, and Rabbi Yechonin had to find some interesting terrets for Rabbi Shlokish's Pasuk. Nobody, could, nobody was able to give in someone. I'm like, oh, that Pasuk is in the middle case. You know what I give in to you? There is no giving in. So Ravina doesn't like that Raya from Avashi. Sounds like a great Raya. But Ravina says, no, V'dilma Svuki Mistafkele. V'im Tim Tzaloi Merka Omar. The Gemara says, maybe, actually, the, those who set the Talmud up, it's actually interesting because those who set the Talmud up are Ravina and Ravashi. But the truth is that they really just recorded what happened in the Yeshivot. So Ravina is telling Ravashi, even though we know this, and that we're going to bring this down, the Gemara like this, that this is what they said for their Pasuk, and this is what he said for his Pasuk. Maybe the reason why they did that wasn't because they knew. It was because they had this doubt. 
It's for imtim tzuloi me'akalmar. Imtim tzuloi means if you're going to say this, then I'll say that. To take the safe side, the cautious, right? To to imtim tzuloi me'akalmar. 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 That they're going to argue before half Russia. Okay, the, just the Yidiot. So then, Rabbi Yechonon is going to have to say, Rabbi Yechonon is going to say, even the Yidiot themselves are mechalik for the Chataot, then he won't be able to say um, any terrets for that Pasuk unless he says, Kezayitu Mechza. I hope everybody's following me. Um, but if... I don't think it's that difficult, but it's, but if you say, and the truth is, maybe Rabbi Yechonon doesn't have to say this. The Gemara only was 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 what's the, what's the language? How do you say it in English? Exercise and caution. He was exercising caution. The Gemara was saying, if Rabbi Yechonon is so bold and he's really going. That even the Yedia itself, without being Mafra Shakarban, already is Mechalak de Chataot, then the only way he can explain the Pasuk is the case of one and a half and another half to teach you a different Allah. You're right. I mean, it could be that Rabbi Yechon doesn't have to go to such extremes if he was only on after Afrasha. Then he could say that that Pasuk was talking about before Afrasha. And if we have to exercise caution the other way, if Rib Shlokish argued even after Hafrasha and said that after Hafrasha you still have to bring, um, you still could bring one carbon, he was so bold to go that far and to say one carbon even after you were mafresh for the first carbon, then I can't explain the Pasuk of Al Khatato they have to bring for each one in a case where you're already mafresh, because that doesn't help, because if he holds even after you're mafresh a carbon, you still have to you still could only you still could bring one carbon for both. So, the, so therefore, you, he has to interpret the Pasuk after Kapara, he actually brought the carbon. But you're right. He, if Rosh wasn't arguing so vehemently and he was saying that I only argue after Yedias, but not after Afrasha, then you could easily interpret the Pasuk after Afrasha. But the reason why we didn't do that was just exercise caution. We says the worst case scenario, we'll, we still have a way out. At Lacha Kapara. And the worst case scenario for Rabbi Yechonon, we'll explain it with Ochel Kizayis v'chatzi Kizayis v'noi deloi v'ochel chatzi Kizayis. But Lav Davka, not necessarily, did, when we said this, did we say it with clear conviction that this is the what they used the Pesukim for? That's what Ravina told Ravashi. Okay? So what comes out now is that the, Rav, Ravina had the last word here. Is that we don't really know where they argue. Pam, 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 pam. Uh, uh, oh, this Rashi. This Rashi is Givaldi. So, um, there's, there's what to tell you, there's what to say over here, but I, there's something to, to bring into the picture here, which Rashi brings in. And that's why I'm going to tell it to you. We had a machloket yesterday, last night, between Abaya and Rova. What was the case? The guy ate two kezese chelev, and he was told about the first one before he ate the third one. Then he ate the third one. When the same helm as the second one. Rava said, if you bring the first one, it helps for the first and second. But not the third. If you bring the third, it helps for the third and the second, but not the first. If you can bring the middle one, the second, it helps for both. Abayi said, greater. Okay? Fine. So now, So 
So now, and everybody agreed, and it could be that uh, 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 Rava agreed with everything after he heard this word from Abaya, but even when they had the Machloket before Rava, right, retracted, everyone agreed when you bring the first one, okay, that the first one helps for the second one. Okay, so when did you get knowledge about that first one and the second one? So, we know that you only found out about the first one. Because how did the third and the second come together? Because you still haven't found out about the second. If you found out about the second, that would be a idea that divides the second and the third. So you only had a idea about the morning. And yet, and yet, if you bring a carbon for the first, it still covers the second once you find out about the second one. Right? You have to, you have to find that when you bring the carbon. One second, but that means you two separate yidiyot. You didn't find that in one shot. So you ate the first and the second, and you found out about the first, and then you found out about the second. So that is the case of Yechon and Shlokish over here. So how could everyone agree over there? Everyone agreed, at least at this point, even when on the, at the minute that they were arguing, they agreed that if the first one will cover the second. How? According to Rabbi Yochanan over here, once you have a idea for the first one, it divides. It's like I'm already starting bringing my karma because I'm already regretting. If you go with the extreme view of Rabbi Yechanan, the extreme way of expanding. So Rashi says, if it's true, you'll have to say according to that, that Abay and Rava learned like Rabbi Shlokesh. He said, since you were mafresh a carbon, okay, that's good enough. The yidi itself is not enough. Okay? But, if you learn the machlokis over here, is only after you're mafresh a carbon. But before you're mafresh a carbon, Rabbi Yochanan is modeter shlokish. That the yidi itself, he didn't mean the yidi itself. So then Abai and Rabbi could go like both of them. And you, then you cannot corner a Bayan Robin saying they, hold, they have to hold like a Shlokish. Because the reason why the first carbon will help, help for the second is, according to everyone, it will. Because you weren't mafresh anything. Just, just the idea alone, nobody holds here. Even Rabbi Yechim doesn't hold that you have to bring two. Okay? That's what Rashi says. Okay, let's now continue. Um, Omar Ula. Okay, for this sugi, we need a little bit of an introduction. Just some, a few halachas. Yeah, we, we know that there's a. What time is it now? Okay, right. So we know that there is a carbon called an asham. Chatat is brought normally for a sin. That would incur karet. Um, karet, what do you call karet in English? I don't know. Uh, when, when heaven kills a person, young, you know, karet, when he's young, before his time, he's cut off. So if a person does that, bishogeg. He has to bring a karma chatat. Like Chelev is the classic case. Okay? Shabbat. Another very famous case. Because it's karet by Shabbat. But there are other sins that a person brings a guilt offering, not a sin offering. That's what the way Art Scroll translates. I don't know what, the, what I don't know exactly what the, Asha means guilt. And there are Averot you bring an Asham for. You might know some of them. And there's they're they're very not relate, I mean, maybe there is a relationship if you think about it, but there are separate different types of averot. Um, one is called when you a person is mo'el in hegdish, he uses hegdish and he actually uses up some hegdish, let's say a bottle of per oil perfume that belongs to Hashem from the Beit HaMikdash, and he uses it or he eats something that belongs, some food that belongs to hegdish. So the halachah there is that if he does it, b'meizid is mita b'dei shemaim, which is similar to karet. But if he does it b'shogeg, then he brings a carbon. Which carbon? 
the Asham. And that one's called Asham Mi'ilot. He also has to pay back Hegdish. Did by mistake, but he has to pay them back. Let's say he ate an apple and the apple was worth a dollar. So he owes them a dollar and a fifth. How you do the calculation of a fifth of a dollar, it's not so, it doesn't mean specifically, it's usually, it doesn't mean 20 cents, it's probably going to be 25 cents. Or close, because it's once you add the fifth, and then you make it fifth. Whatever it is, not, not important for right now. So, so therefore, what is what a person, again, that uses Hegdish, has to bring a carbon Asham, Asham Mi'ilot, it's called Mi'ila is the usage of Hegdish, a mistake, and he pays them back, plus a fifth. There's another one called Asham Gzelot. So for example, someone swears falsely that he doesn't have any, someone else's money, and then he feels bad, and he, after he swore falsely, he admits so he brings a carbon. It's called Asham Gzelot, an Asham, a guilt offering for stealing. It's not just for stealing, it's for swearing about stealing. Another one is called Asham Shivcha Harufa, which we're going to speak about. Asham Shivcha Harufa is a very, very, very interesting case. The case is you have a Shivcha, which is a Machloka Tanoim, how much of a Shivcha she is. But let's just say that she's half. A shifra kenanit, a non-Jewish maidservant, which cannot have marriage, just marriage does, just doesn't take effect with her, because she's a goy. And the, her other half is Jewish. How can that be? Because let's say she's owned by two owners, and one freed her and one didn't. We're not going to get into the whole case here. And the point is that she was meyuedet, designated to have children by living with an Eved. An Eved Ivri is allowed to live with a Shifra Kenanis. And this is the way that the master will produce more slaves that he will own. The family that they have will be his. So the halacha is now, so she has like kind of a husband, right? She has the Eved Ivri. Now, a Jew comes, has relations with her. So he's Mizana, she's Eshatish. Kill him. No. She's not. Because she's not really able to have Kedushim. So she's not an Eshatish. She wasn't married. So what happens if he has relations with her? Is it like a regular guy? And he gets Makot. Or during the act, someone like Pinchas can kill? Or is it different? So it's different. What is it? Whether you do it by mistake, whether you do it on purpose, you bring a carbon, Asham, Shivcha Harufa. Okay? Now there's another one. This one, we have to tell you what it is. It's an Asham Talui. Asham Talui, all the ones that we just mentioned, there's another one called Asham Nazir. If a Nazir broke his Nazirut in the middle, <coughs> he's asking a kasha. So, let's say the Nazir went to the Beit Akvarot in the middle of the Nazirut. He is... Um, he... He... Um, you can bring her in if you want that. So the, the Nazir, when he goes into the Beit HaKvarot, he ruins his Nizirut, his start again, but he has to bring a guilt offering for ruining it, for becoming Tamei. So that one's also an Asham Nazir. There's another one that's not for a sin. It's called Asham Mitzora. When the Mitzora, well, comes originally from the sin, but it's Mitzora's process of becoming pure, he brings an Asham. Okay, those are very nice Ashamot. But there's another one that's very different. And that's called an Asham Talui. Talui means it's hanging. It's brought specifically for something that you're not sure. 
If you did. It's not guilt. Oh, guilt. Uh, it's actually the, the classic case, which everyone agrees this is for sure the case of Hashem Talui, is as follows. Is um, a person ate two pieces of meat in the morning. This is the classic case, okay. Now, he ate, there was two pieces of meat to eat from. Box number one, box number two. Plate number one, plate number two. He ate one of them. The other one, I don't know, he gave to his dog. Now they're both gone. A guy comes running to him later on and says, you, you ate that meat in the morning on the plate? Yeah, yeah. What, what's the problem? The, the restaurant said that to me. Said, Which one did you eat? Plate number one, plate number two? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not, I can't. I'm not sure right now. I don't know. <laughs> one of them. One of them. I gave it to my dog. I'm supposed, so you don't know. You know, one of them. Plate number one was was chaylev. Plate number two is okay. Which one did you give the dog? The good one or the chaylev? I don't know. So you're not sure if you have to bring a chatat. If you would have known that you did the wrong thing, bring a sin offering. Chaylev is the classic case of chatat. But since you, this is you're not you're in doubt. If you violated something that would have obligated you in a chatat, you did it by mistake, that's for sure. So now what you do is, until you find out, hopefully you have to do a lot of research to find out if you did it or not. And if you find out, you bring a chatat. But in the interim, you can be afflicted a lot from heaven in case you did do it. If you did, the person will have onshim in the he needs them. They're good for him. So in order to atone, so he shouldn't get them, and he can get something else, the Torah says you have to bring an Asham Tali. Okay? Until you find out, and an Orium Kippur comes. Once Yom Kippur comes, you get a full Kappara also. Instead of the Chatan. But if you find out before Yom Kippur that you actually did it, that even though you brought the Asham Tali, you have to bring the Chatan. Okay? It's called Asham Talui. Talui means hanging. You're in a hanging, you're in limbo, you have no idea. So, you know, okay. Okay, now we know about Ashamot. Baruch Hashem. So now the question is like this. Let's say a person, had, the suffix that he had by Asham Talui was a suffix about if he needs to bring an Asham Eloise. Not if he has to bring a chatat. That's the classic case. That's for sure, Asham Tali. Now, his, his question is, one piece in the morning wasn't chaylev and koshamit. One piece was hektish and one piece was chulin. They're both kosher. But one is not kosher for your consumption at all. Because it belongs to Hashem. That I don't know. If I would have known that I did it, what would I what, what would I bring? Asham mi'ilot, because it was hektish, right? There's no chata. There's asham for this, but I'm not sure if I did something that obligated me to bring an asham mi'ilot, so I bring an asham tolu as well. Okay, and everyone agrees. There's over no machloket. Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Tafrin, these are the two men that we're going to have machloket. They agree. So everything we said. You have to bring Asham. But the question is like this. According to Rabbi Akiva, okay, what happens if five days later someone tells you, by the way, I know exactly, I worked in the restaurant. Have you been trying to figure out? Oh uh, no, I know which one of those two plates was Hegdash and Hulan. I heard you trying to find out. He goes, trying to find out? Of course I'm trying to find out. I already brought an Asham Tolui. I couldn't figure it out. I brought an Asham. You know? He says, yeah, I know. He says, what, which one is it? He says, you ate from the green plate? He says, yeah. He says, I'm sorry to tell you. That was hectic. Oh my gosh. So what do you do now? So, Rabbi Akiva says, go bring Asham Milot. 
Rabbi Tavin says, I have a very simple way. And not only go bring Hashem Yilot, and now go pay back Hegdish, and a fifth. Rabbi Tavin says, why bother? Once, what is the difference between the Asham Ilot and the Asham Talui? They both have Kedusha of Asham. They're both the same animal. They're Ayil Zachar, a ram, a male ram, a ram. Okay? I don't know what you call a, a female older sheep, but whatever it is, this is a ram. A ram is a male. So they're both the exact same carbon. So what you could do is, when you bring the first one, when you don't know, you could, you, could make it, you could make it conditional. You could stipulate a condition and say like this. If I never find out by Yom Kippur or I find out that I didn't do anything wrong, okay, so let this be the Asham Talui. But in case I find out that actually I chas shalom ate hekdish, so let this right now be the Asham Vadai, the Asham Mi'ilot, the Asham for being moil in Hegdish. Okay? So, and, I, and, he, and he brings the Chaymish and the Karen, and he gets a full kapara. Now, there's a little problem there. Why didn't Rabbi Akiva like this? This is such a nice plan. I understand you can't do this plan with this stipulated condition by classic case with Chelev because an Osham and a Chatat are two different types of animals. One is a sheep that is in the Keva and one is a older ram that's a Zachar. So you can't stipulate, oh, if I, this is an Osham, tell you. If later on I found out, let this be the Chatat. Can't, this can't be a Chatat. It's the wrong type of animal. But if it's the same type of animal, Rabbi Tarifin has such a beautiful idea. Why do you have to spend money and bring another one? Bring one and say, look, if I never find out, so let this be the Asham Talui. And if I find out, then I bring this as the Asham Vada right now. I'm getting rid of my sin. Such a nice idea. You know what, Rabbi Kiva doesn't like it? I'm going to tell you very simply, because how could you bring an Asham Vada now if you don't have any yidia about your sin? All you have is a Talui. You can bring Talui, but you can't bring one for the Vada. You don't have a Yidia. Rabbi Tarfan says, no such halacha by Asham, only by Chatat. Since Rabbi Tarfan doesn't hold to such a halacha by Asham, therefore it allows you, Rabbi Kiva would agree also with him if that was the case. So you could stipulate the same animal. Why should I bring two? Why should he waste money and go through the whole process again? He could take care of it with the stipulation. Whatever it's for, it should be. But Rabbi Kiva says you have to have a yidiyah for Hashem as well. Okay? And Rabbi Tarfin holds, Hashem Vadai does not need a yidiyah to get a kapara before the kapara. Okay? Now we're able to start. The sugi a little bit. Omar Ula, the mando Omar Oshem Vadai loy boy yidiyah batrila. I think we're going to have to do one of those shiurim this week. That's great. That means another hour of Torah this week for Dafyomi. Instead of the regular seven hours of Torah, this week will be special. We're going to have eight hours of Torah. It's going to be an extra special week. I'm sorry. The Torah is great, you know. The fact that you have to pack in a daf a day is already... I have a plan. Mm-hmm. Since anyways, we're not going to get that far in. Okay. I think we should stop here. And we'll have to get, maybe we'll even make a sheer, I don't know, maybe today, I don't know if you're able to do it later today, whatever. Okay, we'll see. We'll talk. But uh, we are behind now. But uh, Baruch Hashem. Behind the day. So we have to bring. <laughs> behind the day. We're not sure if we're going to stay behind. <laughs>